Hey, welcome back, me immortalized out there. This is the Me Immortals podcast. We've got a musings edition today for you. For Kyron down. Over Corporal here. Kyron at your service. There he is, there he is. And I've got you got Lieutenant One. Or no, you'd be a junior, Commander One. Junior it's, One. It's uh, Commander One. Commander One. It's gotta be a J J sort of name. Uh, junior recruit. I'll be Commander of JSOC of J. Okay. Commander of J. Sounds good. Um, anyways, today, musings, we like to look at uh, some structured thinking around learning thoughts, ideas of the week that's been, things that are keeping us uh, interested, things that are uh, maybe we, it's worth sharing with the Be Immortalites. I want to share some thoughts around gas, NFT gas, uh, but broadly gas, and maybe if we can come up with some ideas on how to fix it <laughs> <laughs> for the future. That'd be good. Mm, maybe some insights into cooking as well. So I haven't really talked too much about cooking, but I have been getting into shock and awe cooking differently than what I normally do. Okay. So it's it's got some thoughts around that. And also just uh, a little question for you. And we've, we've posed this question to each other maybe uh, in the past, but uh, I want to up the ante on it. So Okay. Mine will question. be about uh, fitness, personal fitness and curiosity. Oh, my okay. curiosity did kill the cat. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, I'll I'll get to yeah, the you've, topic you've got of, a of food first. So, uh, cooking. I've and seen you cooking more. I'm I've not seen gonna... this food in our fridge recently. From exactly. Wine. There's big uh, plates of stuff. That's right. I'm not. I'm, I'm not going to say uh, that I'm going to come out here right now and say like, oh, this is my insights into all the things that I've been learning, and it's fantastic. Especially no. considering two episodes ago we were talking about how shit either <laughs> both exactly. of us all are at food and <laughs> don't listen to us. All, all I all I want to basically say is I've been splitting them up into a little my learning, I say, grouping of things for the next year. Uh, in terms of my annual goals and I've just been structured into like basic, intermediate and advanced and it's a few things in the basic group so quite a lot in the intermediate and some in the advanced but what I've found so far anyways in cooking and so to give context to the mere mortalites and people out there it's like what are you talking about? You're like professional cooking? No, this is like again baselining it I'm a true mere mortal for eating I'm just like it, for me if I had to describe it I purely eat based on pay, based on protein and fats and carbs and mm-hmm. you know am i am i hungry cool i'll just eat like a massive volume so if you said to me oh, what are we going to go out and eat i'd be like well uh i'd be down for a pizza or a big pie or something just because it'd be a lot of food depending on what i'm, I'm doing it so um now i've shifted to okay like i'm at the level of okay i'm going to pa- pick up a maggie pack and whatever the maggie pack tells me to do i'm going to go do so, uh, so like you can get a uh, recipe little powder recipes basically so you get a little packet of i love that you don't know this the um uh it's just pack- like a sauce topping sort of thing right sauce, you, you, but you, you turn it into a sauce so, sort of yes yes okay but exactly right. I and think it I just has it a yeah. different type of recipe so yeah. that's basically just been my little process plus trying out a few things here and there and it's just been about purchasing the right ingredients so realistically there's not much that i'm going to uh, share here in learning but the one thing that i was going to give some insights into if you are like me, so and I don't know what the population in the world is that are like me, but maybe there's, there's a few, there must be a few other wines out there like this. Um, one thing that I have noticed, and I wanted to ask you this, with when you cook at dinners, is I get really focused, like really, really, really focused when I'm doing it. Almost to that extent where, because it's so new to me to be doing that, I totally forget a lot of other things. And the only, like the, the times I can relate to that experience is like training. Like when I'm training, I'm super focused. I'm not thinking about anything else. I get a little bit like that when I'm cooking nowadays. So if I was cooking that pie the other day, I, you know, and just reading the recipe and just doing other things, I just got so connected to doing it as okay. opposed to thinking okay. of other things. Do you feel like the way, that way when you do your dinners no, nowadays? Just, no, no way. I, yeah, okay. I, I'm, I'm actually imagining you just putting a pie in the oven and then just staring at it for 40 minutes. Almost, <gasps> almost, <gasps> almost to the point of that. Like, yeah, I would put it There's into... nothing a- for you to do, but... And yeah, this, is, this just, is coming from the guy who burnt his uh, underwear in the oven. So. That is true. That is true. So obviously, <laughs> he's my, not the best cook out there. Um, yeah, yeah I'm, not, I'm not the best oven user for sure. Um, but yeah, uh, that's uh, just one thing I found is more the, the focus. Is it, is it the newness? Like if you were doing the same recipe, if you'd done it 20 times? Oh, for sure. It's, I think it's the... Maybe it's... I don't know if it's an indication that you're learning. Like it, it's a... Oh, that's there because you're, you're yeah, that's, learning. Yeah, that's pretty good. But yeah. I also do that when I'm training, when it's sort of, I guess I'm not really learning, but I am focused on a craft that I enjoy. Would I say that it's a craft that I enjoy? No, not particularly. Like mm. I still, I've got this tendency, I'm like, oh, just go back to cooking easy. Like, why am I wasting so much time? But I do notice this, there's an aspect of learning that it's in there where you have to be so focused in on something and doing it maybe the right way. Uh, because that was the other thing. Let's say cutting an onion. You could cut an onion very easily. 
Well, sure, everybody knows how to cut an onion. But to cut an onion, let's say, very evenly with the right, like, your square sizes so it all cooks correctly, okay, that's something different. And you've got to put some focus into it. Um, mm. So I think that that's been, there's been some good opportunities to focus on something that I definitely don't tend to do. Yeah, so okay. it's been It's been nice. It's been nice. Yeah, uh, I'm, I'm the same with the learning front. When I've been listening to, you know, learning about Bitcoin or learning about you know this new thing of podcasting or whatever mm. it is i can't listen to podcasts for example in the background while doing it music is okay because mm. music is sort of beneath the surface it doesn't really matter yeah but anything with talking related this was even actually at work though so i wasn't learning when i was creating the same design for the you know three north 25 hinds for this particular you know block 12 mm. this particular section I've, I've done that in three north 24 hinds and three north 23 hinds and uh you know I, it's not like i was learning anything there but listening to things or listening yeah particularly podcasts but uh, i had a friend who on the op- opposite side who would hear giggle every now and then because he was listening to comedy and i just went how the hell do you do that man i can't i can't concentrate yeah, no. on, the, on those two like that mm. um no, and and then as far as cooking for me, no, it's um, it's it's just a slice and dice now. Just make, make sure I don't cut off my fingers, but other than that, I'm I'm good. Yep, streamlined. Yeah, mm. definitely. Well, we're let's go on to the fitness. So we actually haven't really talked about fitness that much in the, right, in the a little past while. Mm-hmm. past while. So I, I wanted to give an update. I finally got some points again for the uh, fitness challenge. I don't know I've, if that counts as points. Like it's too simple with the forty kilo dips. Fuck that's off. that's like. I, I, I wouldn't count those points. Oh, I yeah. Think that okay, would be, yeah. Would... How about you go do some um, uh, 90 minute, ha- uh, sorry, not 90 minute, 100 minute, 100 mm-hmm. second handstands? How about you? Yeah, yeah, Easy. Yeah, Easy. Second, yeah, yeah. Against yeah. the wall. Against the wall. No, no, no <laughs> walls. No walls. Uh, what what would that be for you? How much weight? That would be, it'd be about the same, right? You're was it the, how many reps? Uh, it was three reps for me. So, sure. so uh, what I did, people, was mm-hmm. uh, half, well, more than half body weight, so 40 kgs three reps mm. for, for dips. For dips. And I was pretty pretty happy with pretty that. Pretty chuffed. Yeah. 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 So, uh, finally got some points again for there. I, you know, I was actually thinking if I didn't do the running, I, I reckon I would have... Crushed gotten, a lot more of those points. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, for sure. That that running period just... I think we could have done the whole year of running and I don't think we could have gotten the marathon points, to be honest. No, I could have got them. I, I definitely... Yeah. 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 I, I, I was on the edge of it, man. I was... Mm. That, that time that we talked about when I... You found me, you know, dying, mm-hmm. trying to get back to my car. Uh, that if that day had just gone a little bit differently, I, I think you would have crushed it. Yeah, yeah. Or there. if I'd continued for the two, three weeks after that, mm-hmm. but it was getting to that point of you know where I was striving, meditating an hour a day, preparing for the meditation retreat, like all mm-hmm. these different, you know, trying to learn German, so much shit I was trying to pack in, and I just uh, mm-hmm. that was when I was doing the resenias as well. There was. Holy Lots shit, there was a on. lot of stuff going on and I just didn't have um So didn't here's have a question time. for you. The so the dips, like to me, the doing the forty kilo dip seems like and this is just like from me, seems like, like well that's too easy. That's like like a very simple thing in terms of comparatively to say a marathon run, right? Mm. Do but in the point schemes and this is not to say anything about the point schemes, in the point schemes that netted you what, three points would it be? What was it it was a point that? That was four a, points, it was right? a double, yeah. Okay, so say four points. Double whatever. And the marathon was like four points. Now, we didn't associate points to be like kind of equivalent to each other. No, no, no. no. But another, I, more the question I have is, do you consider the fact that you didn't do the marathon a failure, right? And would you say that you would put the, the fact that doing a marathon sub four hours and doing that level of dip at 40 kilos for three reps to be of considerable difficulty to you? So, so look, in terms of time invested to do it and mental energy and all the things that make up mm-hmm. doing something yeah the four points are no the the marathon should have been f- 30 gotcha. points or okay. something yep. like that no there was, it was just because with the schema that we we created it was just, just that for that in. um so no the, the you know the marathon was more of a, a mental honestly i'm thinking mm-hmm. i probably to for the equal weighting of that i was putting into it it should have been a yearly goal it should have been gotcha. Okay, that yeah. that level yeah. rather than just you know a sort of casual thing to do on the side. Mm. And so yeah. I, I would say the problem with it was one, it wasn't a yearly goal, and but I was treating it like it was, and I was getting distracted from other things by, right, by doing right. that. No, so the question, the reason I'm asking this is because I had something I wanted to talk about, which was more around 
kind of starting again and if you were to restart again and you went for a one month or a one year kind of timeline and there was going to be a bit of a question about that but it all it makes me think specifically for this one right i'm thinking right so do you feel uh, as proud of the dip at 40 kilos as you would have if you've done the marathon points no i put it this way okay no. so you would be more proud of doing or to you would have been like oh, much more of a good feeling it, done well that yeah it, it would have just been equal to the amount of eff- effort investment i put in so so to get the marathon mm. i would have had to put in let's just say 200 hours mm. of running the the dips was probably over the course of you know, the, of the three months yeah it would it would it would maybe be yeah 30 40 hours yeah. something like that. so okay and here's my like the the key question i want to ask you because so this was for i'm trying to get some learnings for my next year sort of goals in mm. the in the way that so here me more lights if you don't follow us you go back and find a lot of the monthly goals and stuff but we basically we're doing a um point scoring system and i guess the top 12 things that we we're trying to do fitness wise i'll chuck it up on the screen. On a sort of yeah. year by year basis right and i was finding that a lot of those ones were were okay but there was times when, yeah, I just lose focus on them. I wouldn't want to do it anymore. I wasn't attaching them to my true annual goals. And so that's why I'm shifting it to annual goals now and targeting them specifically. But almost chunking them up, I'm going to say, to in a smaller basis than previous ones, where previous ones might have been really big ones. So really big ones I'm saying here is like a marathon, right? That That's like a lot of investment. It's a lot of time, but it's a lot of relation if you actually do it. And if you really wanted to attack it, cool make a yearly goal but i think i'm going more towards down the path of very specific goals in the sense of a percentage body weight lift for squats or for deadlifts or for olympic lifts that t- sort of deal um if you were looking ahead and, and you're maybe putting it together anyways for the next sort of yearly goals would you go down the path of having more of those say 40 kilo dip style point systems or mm. i guess goal settings or would you lean towards more of those like big marathon tile style you know achievements and making them just broader yeah no i i think for the for the fitness stuff in particular i really want easy things that i can tick off that are because i'm well into the plateau strategy mm. uh, plateau stage of everything that i'm doing yeah. handstands the body weight movements it's it's definitely plateau plateau season for me there's not mm. many hills and valleys around to be found so i need to artificially create some yeah. so what i'm sort of thinking is you know this next year i really want to focus on the one arm handstand so mm. that'll be the main thing and i will just reflect basically all of 80 percent of the targets in there will reflect that so yeah. it'll be obviously getting you know one arm handstand for five seconds 10 seconds 15 seconds on on each arm mm. i will maybe include more ones related to sort of some sort of like pressing skills so being able to to really hold myself in um, a leaning forward position so mm. it's really working on the arms and scapula and things like that um, but all of the this the problem with this last year's one was i think similar for you we were just putting random shit in everywhere it's like oh yeah exactly i'll put in overhead press and i'll put in press to stands i'll put in some ab things and i'll do a handstand push-ups so that's yeah. shoulders i'll do a max hold on the handstand that's like scapula and then i'll also do weighted dips and weighted mm. pull-ups like what the fuck Opposite man things, yeah. and i think all, my, all over I, I, the shop. I, I, swimming running heavy lifting yeah. like all over <laughs> yeah. the shop so yeah uh, well, and this is uh, another thought that this was kind of streaming through my mind was what kind of uh, thought I would give for listeners out there, especially because you might be like, okay, well, maybe we're at the level of intermediary slash advanced. And I might actually even suggest if you were a beginner, so again, this is me thinking of how would I restart, right? So if I had to restart again, how might I tackle it with goal setting specifically to fitness? I think I would lean towards being more broader in nature and not worrying about the, the smaller goal sets because you're just going to crush through a lot of them really quickly. So mm-hmm. I'm, I'm thinking, uh, let's just say you, you've literally done like no lifting before ever, like movements or anything. I would say you could think of it as like one pull up, one muscle up. That's like, you can just say that and be like, okay, aim for that because you can do a lot of things like scap pull ups. You can do, um, you know, assisted pull ups, bended pull ups, box pull ups, whatever, all these things. But you wouldn't set the goals to do like two bended pull ups, two box pull ups. I would just say, okay, you can be broader kind of in the nature of the running right so we're yeah. like just run basically without a specific timing um and i think as we lean towards more advanced settings or intermediate to advanced i think shifting those goals to be much more in the micro 
uh, so you can be more specific and also get the sense that, okay, now you're ticking things. Because once you've got a muscle up, okay, let's just say you keep going and you get five, you get 10, okay. But the level of doing, you know, continuing that, it's, it's kind of the same. But if you want to improve, say, from a muscle up, like say a swinging muscle up to a strict muscle up, it's not like just saying, I'm going to go from a swinging to a strict. No, now you've mm. got to say, okay, I want to try and get five specific movements of this and be strict here. And I think that'll be more advantageous than just saying like, oh, that's going to be my goal. Yeah, yeah. Mm. I think one of the other bad things that I have done was, I think you just mentioned it then, when you're into the intermediate advanced, say I want to do, I, I have down in this year's one strict muscle up, two strict muscle ups, three strict muscle ups. Mm. The thing is, once you get one, you're, you're pretty much right there for the two and three. There's yep. not a whole lot more training you need to get into that. Mm. So maybe it should have been closer to, you know, I'll do a high pull up that reaches my, uh, let's say, abdomen level. Mm. Okay, then I'll also put in a pull up, a uh, muscle up with bands, mm. and then a muscle up with, um, you know, a kip, and then a st- pure strict muscle up. Yeah. So that way it encompasses the the levels because right now i think a lot of the the one two three the yeah thing. they're they're just mm. you get them really quickly once you get to that stage yeah, but it's, yeah you know the whole point of doing it is to make it gamified and make like oh yes i got some points because exactly, it's exactly. been well, what, that, that's six kind months of, since either yeah, of us have talked about points. Points. <laughs> i haven't even looked at the points like, i haven't <laughs> yeah. even looked at them yeah and that's what it, it uh because i was gonna sort of talk about this in the annual goals but it might it might be too little of a detail but i wanted to share here that's something that i was thinking about because looking ahead so there's, there's some, going to be some swimming stuff in my annual goals to give you some uh, little... Ent- for people out there anticipating our annual goals, sneak peek. Um, Stay tuned for so, September. But, but for swimming, so my thoughts are, okay, the way I'm going to break down that goal isn't going to be down the very small details. So uh, my common thing to go is, okay, I'm going to aim for this exact sort of pacing or this exact sort of time. But the reality is, maybe I used to be intermediate once upon a time in swimming. It's probably basic now. I'm probably in the basic level. Um, maybe fast, but basic. Hmm. So... For me, I'm like, okay, well, actually, don't worry about even pacing or time or at all. Just go for something really broad. Let's just say, hit this distance. Just literally this or, or um, spend pacing. this just many hours time. in just, the pool. Just spend, yeah. yeah, exactly. Spend four hours in the pool yeah. this month or something like that. Purely for the fact of just don't worry about those things. You, like, you'll make humongous gains quickly and you don't even know how much that is. So don't restrain it. Just mm. go for it. Yeah. But then when it comes to these specifics on, say, lifting, like, okay, squatting and deadlifting, I've been doing that nine years, 10 years. For me, it's okay, be really detailed with some of these things. So now I'm, there's a particular 12-week program that I'm following and I'm following it very, very strictly in the sense that maybe in the past I might just go, oh, okay, I'm just doing squats. No, it needs to be like you're doing these specific sets at these percentages at this time, two times a week, really tracking it, making sure you're progressing and that'll lend to this particular outcome. So I think that I can do that at that level because it's maybe intermediary to advanced, but I wouldn't apply the same logic to my swimming because yeah. sure you get you'll you'll get gains doing it both ways but i just think we're well, going to get gains anyways and the latter is probably more efficient to getting you in because yeah. then if not there's just so much variables of like oh well you might just go in there and not do that time because of whatever you just whatever might be happening where you're more dialed in with other aspects yeah the risk when you're first starting off something and and setting goals like like we're talking about here which are really specific i'm going to do x mm. i'm going to do y is you really have no idea how long it'll take to get there. That's true. And, so, and we got caught up with this on the running, right? I, mm. I think we went into it almost at an initial stage of like, we could probably do the right <laughs> yeah. marathon without even training. Like just to do it for two months. Yeah. And look, the reality is that maybe if we really put in effort, maybe four or five months, right? Maybe. Well, that's, Looking that's back what it got to me. I think four months of pretty solid training got me really close really to close. it. Yeah. And I, I think we went into it with the precognition that it wasn't going to be that then we realized how much it was how much it was taken away from everything else and then we went okay no no yeah, we're not yeah. going to do this but if we at the beginning knew it we might have gone okay n- we know when we have to start now sure obviously looking back it's much easier but that's why i would kind of go okay for those things where you feel like you might be into the beginner level yeah don't even worry until you you get to a point where you're comfortable and you're like okay now i'm starting to understand then you start seeing all the things you don't know and that, that's probably the other thing it's the is it What's that um, effect where, you know, the less you know, the more you think that you're... Dunning-Kruger. Dunning-Kruger effect, yeah. is it? Uh, that's that's the the more... You, there's, there's like a little peak where you, you learn a bit more knowledge and you think, oh man, I'm the fucking yeah. king. Is that, Dun- is that Dun- Dunning-Kruger effect? Well, so that one's where it's... You, you, 
you start off thinking zero and you're like, oh man, I'm the shittest. I have no confidence. Mm. Or you, you, start, you start like a baseline or something. You go really high you and then you actually start yeah, tapering and then, down. Then and then once you reach that level up. and then it's, yeah. Anyway, so Dunning-Kruger effect, yeah, it's just that uh, in, in this form. It's a sense of like, you just, you'll do a little bit and you'll go like, oh, I know how to bloody swim, mm. blah, 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 until you, you've properly put the paces and then you realize, oh, damn, to go from a, you know, from a hundred meter swim to actually do sub one minute. Oh, okay. There's a lot of things here that I don't know about and streamlining and aerodynamic and what I have to do with my turning of my hands and how fast should I be kicking my feet? Actually, it's not even about your feet. It's all about your arms, all the sort of stuff that you learn and you go, oh, okay, okay. I realize this now. And then you can start putting the details together. Why isn't it about your feet? You're like your, your you legs are, this. You would have thought this. Your legs are the strongest part of your body. You yes. Know, that's why. what you think. And you think like propeller, you know, you're kicking really hard, mm. right? Um, and, and there's a reason like you're actually supposed to be like, it's eight beats eight beats per second at the fastest and it goes all the way down to like two beats per second for or four kicking. beats for, yeah, yeah for like the longer distances but the reason is actually you want to keep your body as streamlined as possible like you want to be as a narrow sort of a narrow line, straight yeah. line as you can to go through the water the more you're kicking your legs the more drag you're actually causing against the water and slowing you down yeah I, I used to be almost like obviously you're going to be faster with like kicking that's common knowledge but um, you can not, you normally train with a little buoy in like in between your legs and you actually go and, and swim around um you're generally only 90%, like you're at a 90% speed swimming with a bow, or maybe 80% speed okay. as comparison to legs. So you can literally not use your legs at all. Just let mm. them dangle and you'll be almost just as fast with your wow. hands. Yeah, so you should be that. And you should really feel like your lats pulling and stuff like that. Are so, they more al- almost in a way just a stabilizing thing? Like, you know, the on a helicopter, you've got the, the that small the little rotor, rotor yeah. which is that's well, the stabilizing gyrator, whatever. I mean... It, Maybe I wouldn't say so just because uh, you, I could also like go with, out there right now and swim without a buoy and just like swim like legs at the back without moving and still just be able to, to swim like in a straight line. Yeah. Uh, it does help obviously propel you forward but the the less you actually kick through your knees you actually want to kick at like your, the joint of your ankle yeah, down at yeah, the bottom. That's, that's where you actually want to get those flipper movement. Type flipper movement. type movement. Yeah. Mm. So. Yeah, there you go. Fitness, yeah, we haven't talked that in a while. Very good. Uh, I'll, I'll quickly do mine yes. just to, to cap off my ones. Why curiosity can be costly. So... Mm. Uh, killed the cat. Yeah, yeah, it definitely killed the cat. And I think you um, would you would you say there's any downsides to curiosity? Do you think? Uh, I think yeah, the, I, know I think there must be. Yeah, there you're, must be. Yeah, you're a more proponent on of it than yeah, I. Yeah, I'm for a sure. proponent but, for for being curious. That's for sure. But yes, the like the the easy downside that I see in my mind is like, oh well, yes. Uh, getting too curious about something does lead you away from the important things that you should be focusing on. Yeah, yeah. See, that was my sort of thinking. So let's just take Brendan for example. He mm. loves handstands when. He finds someone who is super into them. Like when he goes to the park and he'll find someone, he'll be correcting people, learning for himself, you know, mm. explaining, get yeah, this angle of the arm movement, this what. I mean, I don't give a shit. I just want to be able to handstand. So yep. I don't, you know, if you told me about the swimming thing, yeah, sure, I could understand about the flipper mm. movements. Or if you just said, hey, you, you go faster this way and I got to, to experience cool. it for yep, myself. That's it. Good, take it off, I don't care. Mm. Um, so I was just thinking like my... I'm not really sure that I'm really curious about anything. I, I sometimes hear people, mm. um, I was listening to Lex Fridman and it was Max Walker is the um, the sleep scientist guy. I hope it's Max Walker. Mm. Um, anyway. I can have a quick look. Yeah, he, uh, he, he was just like, I love sleep research. I love looking at these things. And I just went, man, I, I don't have that for anything. I'm... I'm slightly curious about lots of things, but n- not all in on one thing. And it did just get me thinking, though, you know, it's almost a benefit in a way that I'm not curious because I can just spend that time training it. So, in a way, mm-hmm. like I, I sometimes watch Brendan at the park and he'll get really into this and then he's looking up the body mechanics and doing this thing. And I'm just over there practicing handstands. Yeah, just, and, just and actually doing it. Same with mm-hmm. Spanish men. There's all these, you know, there's so many words to learn, there's so many different things. But sometimes i can just tune it out and be like i'm just gonna go do it i'm gonna put in the hours of practice rather than the yeah letting my curiosity take me down this you know procrastination random way. yeah, yeah and it's <laughs> you know i'm not saying that he's procrastinating he's obviously put in work and a lot of people are but it it does get to that feeling for me where it's like mm, you know what it almost seems like an excuse for practice procrastinating or yeah or you know fearing to succeed at something so rather than getting really good at it because you're putting hmm. in the hours you're putting in the hours of you know a side related thing to it sure yeah, yeah. and i'll tell you as long as curious doesn't kill the action so mm. i think that of the faces is like it's good to be curious to get you to yeah that's be entertained about something yeah. 
but not to kill the action yeah, that is required sure. to do it. Yeah, so I, I think a lot of people can get can get stuck in, around that topic where uh, let's just say you get really curious about cryptocurrency. Like you get really, really curious, but then you're curious about Solana or, mm. crypt, or Ethereum or Ethereum NFTs token or Ethereum or, Classic or NFTs. Yeah, or Ethereum staking cl- or... To all of a sudden, you're curious about the entire ecosystem and you learn heaps of it. And you and, don't invest. And you don't invest or yeah. you don't participate. Mm. Like, because investing is one thing. Like people could say, well, you want to do investment. Cool. I mean, there's some people out there who want to uh, get... Uh, like participate in the communities or be active in the sense that I want to create my own NFT or I want to purchase someone else's NFT or I want to help someone create a DOA, right? All this with random stuff. Cool, but if, if you're curious but not doing the action, then yeah, okay, then then, you, then your downfall's found there. Yeah, I think you nailed it. Mm. Nice, man. Um, all right, well, I think well, I, I think I've probably covered all my topics as well for musings. Yeah. Um, so we might might leave it at that. Okay. Folks. Um, that has been the the Me Immortals musings edition today. Musings. Um, I want to leave you folks with a little note. Um, I've started to see quite a few people uh, replying back to me on Twitter. Right okay. now, I changed our Twitter. Yeah, we, we used to, We used to have a Me Immortals. Um, I, I put a Twitter. lot of Twitter posts out there. I think a I got lot, up to a lot. 50, uh, maybe even to 100. Well, I can, the, I could probably tell you because if I go into our Twitter now, the mere mortal moments, the mere mortal, like because I pretty much just stole our mere mortal one. Yeah, I shouldn't be able to see how many posts there has been. Hopefully, well, um, if you just go to the the latest mere mortal moment, it'll tell you how many of those I posted. I think it was up to the, there was quite a few in there. Um, well, there you go. I've probably posted. Let, let me let me say, I've probably personally posted about. A hundred things to Twitter, mm. and there's one thousand ninety four tweets. Oh my god! So there's easy like nine hundred stuff <laughs> that we posted. But a bunch, bunch what of I, things in there. More to say is that I've seen a lot of people interact with us through that channel, um, and you just put, correctly pointed out there was someone uh, who invited us to or well, suggested we should be on the yeah. board. Chad Farrow, thank a, you. Chad Farrow on the on the board. You know, uh, so he's Chad, strong with a name like yeah, that. Yeah, Chad, Chad. Obviously, current on Twitter, but uh, he he made me aware, and we've made a comment back to you. And we actually would love to interact with that with that group. Uh, but more, I'm just seeing there's some interactions happening on Twitter. That's pretty cool. I'm also going to give a shout out to the VFAM group. I've been talking to some people. I'm not going to call out the names just in case they want to keep it private. But some of those guys on the V Friends uh, Australian Discord channels, and they're catching up with these sort of stuff. Big props. I also saw them subscribe. So thank you very much. And if you haven't checked this out on all the various platforms, YouTube. Spotify? Well, no, no, not Spotify because Karen hates Spotify. Go to Apple um, <laughs> or other all the platforms like the uh, Pod Podcasting 2.0 different apps. There's so many of them. Just literally type in There's Podcasting 2.0 yeah. apps and you'll probably find me models on every single one of them I'll, at this point. I'll give you a new one, um, Fountain.fm. I just uh, they were bugging out for me recently, mm. but they uh, fixed They've come it up. Through. Yeah, he actually uh, messaged us on uh, the you email asking is? for beta. Uh, Oscar Mary. There you was, go, Oscar the, Mary FM. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, there you go. So Jeez, shout out galore. Fountain dot FM. Yeah, man, we're dude, we're, we're generous here at generous the Mere here Mortals. Generous here at the Mere we, we just you, you want to shout out? Here's a shout out. We give it but away. I was actually gonna say, <laughs> I was gonna make a joke that NFT guys, what crypto? You're worried about your privacy? <laughs> it's not what crypto is about. It's, it's about giving. About it's about giving it away. All right, folks. Uh, that's it from the Admiral. Current down. Uh, General one over here. Mere Mortals one out. Current out. Oh, turn hood. <laughs>